One of the problems when installing a jet pump or centrifugal pump is getting the motor set up correctly. We will try to cover the problems most commonly seen when installing or troubleshooting an existing motor. Most of these motors are capacitor start and single phase. The common design will have what is called a start switch, which disconnects the start capacitor when the motor reaches running speed to allow it to run on the main windings only. Most of these motors are dual voltage, which is indicated by the motor label. They will have what is called a thermal overload, which will shut down the power to the windings until the overload cools down, at which point the motor will restart on its own. This occurs when there is high or low voltage or the pump is dragging, causing the motor to draw high amps. The other item is the start capacitor being damaged and preventing the motor from starting, indicated by the motor buzzing. You can usually tell if the capacitor is bad by the black seepage coming from the vent port on the top of the capacitor, but the best way to check the capacitor is with a capacitance meter. When installing a pump, one should meter the voltage being supplied by your power source to ensure that the voltage is matched for the way the motor is wired, while a duplex outlet with a proper prong configuration should be 115 volts, it may not be, so always pull out the volt ohm meter and confirm the voltage coming in. If the wiring is not to code, be sure to have it corrected by a qualified electrician so the installation is safe. Check motor label for proper wiring of the motor for the supplied voltage so the motor and supply voltages are matched properly. Another item to check is the wiring and make sure the wire gauge is adequate for the voltage and horsepower being applied. Earth ground terminals should be connected to a good solid earth ground to comply with code and to make sure the installation is safe. The motor is the driving force for a jet or centrifugal pump and if wired incorrectly, will prevent the pump from performing or running. Let's take a look at the back of a motor. Let's look at the start capacitor. It stores energy and is used to push the motor into motion with a surge of energy. This component can be damaged by short cycling or a faulty start switch. Now let's take a look at the start switch. The start switch connects the start cap with the motor windings and when the motor comes up to speed, the switch opens and takes the start capacitor out of the circuit to allow the motor to run on the main windings only. If the pump is older and has wear and tear on it, the contacts on the switch may need to be replaced. This will be indicated by the pump not starting plus giving a 60 cycle hum and drawing higher than normal amps as indicated by the motor nameplate. Now let's look at the voltage switch. This switch is used to select the voltage that is being supplied to the motor. The voltage supplied to the motor should be confirmed with a meter before the pump is run. If the incoming voltage is wrong, such as low voltage coming in, then the performance would be low and if run for any length of time, would cause the overload to trip. If the incoming voltage is high relative to the motor setting, the overload will trip quickly. This covers the components in the back of the motor that you need to be aware of. To start, let's say we have installed the pump and we have heard the centrifugal switch click. Which indicates that the motor is up to speed, but performance is low. The bladder tank is filling slowly, but not reaching shutoff pressure. Check the pressure gauge to see if the pressure is consistent. If the pressure or amps on the motor keep fluctuating, we have an air leak on the suction side. A recommended installation is with a vacuum gauge on the suction line and a pressure gauge on the discharge. The gauges will show what the pump is or isn't doing. If we have a problem with wiring giving inadequate voltage or a faulty breaker, the pump may not run, but if it does, low voltage can cause low performance and possible failure. If the pump is dragging, you could have low performance, but this should be easily identified by high amps on the incoming lines to the motor. A simple clamp around amp meter will confirm if the amps comply with the motor label. To confirm if the impeller is rubbing, you can simply disconnect the power and rotate the motor shaft with your fingers to see if any resistance is felt while rotating the shaft. 
If resistance is felt, then disassemble the pump and correct the problem causing the drag. We have not looked at the pumping function in any depth since this was to address the motor primarily. Another set of videos will address troubleshooting the pump functions of a jet pump or centrifugal pump and what can cause them to not operate properly.